Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. It's Wednesday, new release day here on the channel. We're going to take a look at here of the brand new release just came out, uh, 23rd studio album from this legendary band on Inside Out Music. The band, of course, is uh, Jethro Tull, and the album is Rock Flute. All right, spelled there in the Norse way of spelling rock flute again rock ragnarok right this is basically a concept album from mr anderson and company uh that uh basically centers all on characters and gods and whatnot dealing with norse mythology so every song basically has a different theme a different character about someone else or another god or something like that in norse mythology but uh as a whole, you basically can call this a concept album, okay? And uh, like I said, rock standing for Ragnarok, float, f flute, right? They, I think it was originally supposed to be called rock flute, and they decided to make it look a little more authentic. And I think uh, originally uh, this was supposed to be an all-instrumental album dominated by flute. And then uh, he, as Ian was working on the songs, he figured he kind of told me this himself uh, in my interview with him here on the channel a couple months ago that it just developed into another Jethro Tull album. And I mean, the Zealot Gene basically came out, in, you know, second half of last year. And now just like a few, basically a few months later, we have another Jethro Tull album. So I think uh, when you look at the history of the band, this is the shortest span of time in between two studio album releases so pretty cool i think so <clears throat> in the band of course one slight change from the last album ian anderson of course on flutes acoustic guitars other instruments lead vocals david goodyear on bass john o'hara on keyboards and accordion scott hammond on drums and now full-time in the band the very young joe Parrish on guitars uh, electric and acoustic guitars he did a little bit on the previous album, but he is now a full-time member of the band. And uh, actually, you know, for, for a musician so very young, puts up a really good show for himself on this album. So for many of you who may have complained about the lack of kind of rock on the Zealot Gene, which had its moments, but for the most part, it was a little more of a reserved album. Uh, I think you'll be happy to know that this album definitely ups the ante on there's lots of electric guitar on this album a lot of riffs a lot of solos tons of great flute uh and a, a couple other things that i'll get into here as we go forward but uh, i'm going to do like a track by track analysis here because i think this album deserves it uh so it starts off um with a song called Veluspo, which the first time I heard i was a little worried i was kind of listening to this and i hear like this like kind of um female spoken word vocal which i believe is in i guess norwegian or some kind of ancient dialect from the norse times or something and then ian comes in with this kind of like uh spoken word thing and i was kind of like hmm okay hopefully the whole album isn't like this grant it's not it's just kind of a way to lead into the album uh but then the heavy riffing comes in the flute is gorgeous so nothing to worry about there so that's Valuspo. second up is uh jinun gapap or wait jinun gagap Something like that. I mean, it's just, yeah. Uh, another pretty semi-heavy song. Big riffing, nice bursts of lead guitar and flute. Uh, you know, Ian's kind of singing now in that little, like, kind of like hushed whisper vocal style, which you heard quite a bit on the Zealot Gene. Some people don't like it. That's what you get from him now. He really can't do much more than that. Uh, and I think it's fine for the most part. I don't, you know, I don't really, I, I fully understand and I'm aware of where Ian is in this state of the game. And I'm okay with that. You know, if you're not, well, then you don't listen to the album, right? So what can I tell you? Uh, good song, though. Uh, All Father kind of has that whimsical Jethro Tull flair. Got a catchy chorus. Uh, again, the flute is just wonderful. The flute playing on this album is just out of control good. Ian is such a good flute player. Uh, and again, you got some bursts of heavy guitar riffing, which I kind of like. Um, so that's All Father. And again, it's got that, that kind of 70s, that whimsicalness that you love about Jethro Tull. Very, very cool. Uh, then you got The Feathered Consort is up next. Uh, this one has a darker edge. Wouldn't have sounded out of place to me on an album like Stormwatch. Uh, the lead flute melody from Ian is great. There's big amounts of guitars and keyboards uh, already by this song. And again, we're only a couple tracks in. I'm liking the fact that there's more guitar muscle on this album. But one of the things that I noticed, and I, I kind of feel it on this song and throughout the album, uh, I feel like in spots it would have been nice to have some extra keyboards. I think O'Hara, when you hear him, he's doing some fine stuff. But I would have liked 
you know, some Hammond, Oregon in spots. You get in a couple places, but not all that much. You know, I've, I've, one of the great things about Tull in the 70s and even in the 80s is like, you know, the, the Martin Barr's big guitar riffing and guitar lines usually matched up pretty well with, you know, John Evans' Hammond, Oregon, or, you know, the, the later on the synths into the 80s by various guys. And I think the keyboards are pretty laid back on this album. Whereas on the previous album, there was a lot more keyboards and lots of acoustic guitars, not as much electric guitar. So I hear, I think that the, the Ian has really wanted to put the electric guitar out to the forefront, which I'm totally fine with. I love that. It just would have been nice to have a little bit more keyboards there as well, working alongside it. But anyway, not to distract from, from the Feathered Consort, which is a really, really good song, one of my favorites here. Then you got Hammer on Hammer, which is more of a folk-based start, a folk-based song to start off with. You know, love if you love like the late '70s Tull, you like that kind of folky thing that they had going on. That's how this song kicks up kicks in but then you've got uh electric guitar comes into play get a nice slow build on this stuff it actually gets heavier um you know you can hear ian's vocal limitations on a song like this uh some of the more rocking songs it's like he's trying to keep up with the, the heavier arrangements and he strains a little bit but it's not terrible because again he's kind of in a certain wheelhouse now it's kind of like this kind of like kind of more of a whisper from him he sounds a little frail but he doesn't embarrass himself by any means so uh and this one's got a really cool uh synth solo again i love the spots where you can hear stuff like that uh, a searing guitar solo um really dig this one it's all about ragnarok right very cool stuff uh next up one of my favorites on the album is a uh, wolf unchained which is a big hard rock riffy song lots of lead flute uh, this one reminds me of some of the heavier Tull stuff in the 80s, right? So some of those heavier tracks that you got on like Crest for a Nave and Rock Island and, you know, uh, even Broadsword and the Beast. Uh, lots of soloing, pretty hot arrangements. There's a lot of back and forth between guitars and keys and flute and things like that. Definitely one of my favorites, Wolf Unchained. I think uh, that's one of the highlight songs if you want to go investigate some of this stuff. Uh, then you got the perfect one. This is more pastoral, folky Tull. Great majestic feel, the flute obviously shines uh, it's got a memorable chorus again Ian sounds a little frail but it still kind of works in the confines of the song because it's a pretty mellow track so that's the perfect one uh, Trickster is up next fun upbeat Celtic influence song nice complex flourishes lots of bursts of flute accordion Hammond guitars and then the vocals kick in it almost sounds like the vo this one needed to be an instrumental uh, I you know I think Ian's vocals and this particular track are actually some of the weakest on the album. And it's almost like because like the song is aggressive, it's fun, it's quirky, it's Celtic, it's a lot going on, it's complex. And then the vocals come in and you're like, you know, like about the midway point, you're like, ah, maybe just should have left this as an instrumental track. I think it would have worked out better, but it's really, really cool. Trickster. Uh, Cornucopia is up next. That's another folk-based song. Got piano, synth, flute, acoustic guitar. It's quite lovely. Um, I think when you know you listen to a song like this, you realize that Ian Anderson can still write a great melody, uh, and I think his his very uh, mellow, hushed vocal style works really well on this particular song. Really good stuff. It, and again, the melodies are really really nice in this one. That gives way to the Navigators, which is more of a driving rocker. You got some you know nice riffing. Love the use of Synths by O'Hara. Um, again, I wish you would hear more of that throughout the album. They appear in a few tracks, but uh, I would have liked to hear more of this. Another really fun, fun song. Dig this one a lot, The Navigators. Uh, then you got Guardian's Watch. Another strong, slow build song. I love these these tall songs on this album that start off kind of folky. Reminds me of kind of like, um, you know, some of the stuff on Roots to, Roots to Branches. Or heavy horses, where you had these like kind of like folky intros, and then the song builds and builds and builds. Uh, this one starts off again. You got acoustic guitar and flute, then the big heavy rock flourishes come in. Uh, it's got like an epic feel to it. Nice use, use of dynamics with all the different instruments. Like towards the end, you can hear all this stuff going on. Very very cool. Guardians watch, and then the album ends with uh, God. How am I gonna? Ithaval, I guess. Um, which kind of ends the album on a similar note to how it starts off with Voluspo. All right, so very similar. You got the female spoken word vocals coming in, uh, heavy riffing and soaring flutes. Again, it's majestic, it's big, um, and finishes out the album in a fine, fine way. So, um, so yeah, so in my summary here, it's a 44-minute album, perfect length, perfect length. 
Uh, I think, like I said earlier, those who wanted more rock in Zealot Gene, I, get, I think you get that here big time. Uh, to me, also, Rock Flute is a little bit more complex to my ears. There's a lot more going on here. And it's, but it's all woven together really, really nicely. And you have the, the folky pieces, the heavier pieces, right? Some prog stuff going on. Very, very cool. Um, you know, will this go down as a top 10 Jethro Tell album of all time? You know, probably not. But honestly, I'd rather listen to this than Tull.com or Catfish Rising any day. And maybe even some days, uh, told, um, uh, Rock Island, right? Rock Island's got its moments. I like it certainly more than, uh, you know, that album that I will not name from the 80s, which is the worst Jethro Tull album of all time. But, uh, but yeah, I think this is good. This is really good. Uh, you know, I mean, I've seen lots of people complain, not just with this album, but with Zella Jean, you know, Ian's voice, oh, he can't sing anymore. And, you know, how come Martin Barr's not on here? How come Andrew Giddings is not here? Or David Pegg or Dwan Perry, you know, those guys are still around. Why can't he have them in the band? It's not Jethro Tull without those guys, you know? I mean, come on, people. I mean, Jethro Tull has always been Ian Anderson's baby. And if you've been a fan for as long as I have, you know he has changed lineups all the time. You know, the time came and went with him working with Martin Barr, apparently. And I think we can all sit and cry about how much we miss Martin Barr and Jethro Tull. But the fact of the matter is, he's doing his own thing. Ian's doing his own thing. That's just the way it is. I, I will say the guitar work on this album is really, really good. And uh, the musicianship is outstanding. So, uh, you know, at some point, you either deal with the fact that Jethro Tull's got a completely different lineup now, or you don't. It's just, it is what it is. But to just not listen to it based on that is just kind of silly, in my in my opinion. Uh, really good stuff on here. Uh, you know, lots of bands go on, legacy bands go on without, you know, original members or classic members. It's, it happens all the time. I mean, look at Yes, I can, I can name a ton of bands that, you know, one member or another, they're out doing other things, they can't get along. It is what it is. I mean, it's just whatever. Um, but I think, you know, we can agree, most of us, that one of the main reasons why we've all listened to Jethro Tull for all these years is Ian Anderson, right? Guy is a musical genius. And he continues putting out great stuff here on this album. So uh, I don't see this as being any different from any other Jethro Tull album that we all knew and loved. It's got a lot of the same elements. It's driven by Ian Anderson. I mean, that's just, that's why we come to a Jethro Tull album to begin with, right? So, and it's good to see that he's working with, you know, most of the same guys for the last, like, you know, six years or so. Of course, with the guitar player being new to the band, but all the rest of the guys have been with him for a little while now. So, uh, good to see. So, um, as far as, like, rating this, I mean, it's just hard, hard to rate something like this because, again, it's so new. And I'm really enjoying it, you know, but is this a four and a half, five star classic? No, of course not. This is this is no Aqualung. This is no Benefit. This is no Thick as a Brick, Passion Play, Minstrel in the Gallery, Songs from the Wood. And it's not, right? Those are all 4.5 out of five star classics. That this just is what it is. You know, but to me, it's almost like 3.5 out of five is just kind of like selling this a little short because this is really enjoyable. Is it quite a four? You know, to me, four is a really great album. I don't know if this is a really great album. It's a really good album. So for right now, I think kind of like what I gave Zealot Gene, I gave that a 3.5 out of 5, if I remember correctly. This is, this is one of those albums that even though I may not rate it as high as others, I can guarantee you by the end of the year, this is going to sit in my top 10 or 15 albums of the year because I really dig it a lot. I fully realize it's not thick as a brick, right? It's not Aqualung, but it's still really good Jethro Tull. And 3.5 out of 5, really good Jethro Tull is really good in my opinion. So, you know, you may disagree. Oh, and you know, I realize I didn't even show you the package here. Let's do that. Okay, so there you have the... Uh... You know, I gotta, I gotta take this out, the CD out, because quite frankly, I would have... I would have loved to have seen that on the cover of the Zealot Gene. I really like that nice little shot of Ian there with the flute. That's that's awesome. Here's the guys resting the band. Really a big miss though, I will tell you. Um, it's like, again, it's very easy to find in and I already knew most of their names, but nowhere in this booklet, maybe they maybe they mention it uh, briefly in here, but uh, it would be really nice if they would have done like on the last page here you got there's the guys in the band here's all this other information about it but they don't list the guys in the band and what they play very strange nowhere in here all right very strange but you get all the lyrics and the inspiration behind all the songs 
right? There's a lot of stuff about Norse mythology and whatnot here and how the album was created and how Ian originally wasn't going to do... Oh, how did I miss this page? Okay, sorry. There you go. Never mind, guys. And all the times I poured through this, for whatever reason, I did not see this. So there you have it again. I'll read it off. Ian Anderson, concert and alto flutes, flute de amour, Irish whistle and vocals, David Goodyear, bass guitar, John O'Hara, keyboards, piano, Hammond organ, Scott Hammond on drums, Joe Parrish James on electric and acoustic guitar, special guest, Uner Birna, spoken vocals, track 1 and 12. How did I not miss You know how many times I've gone through this booklet over the last bunch of days? How did I not see that? God. Well, there you go. It happens, right? It happens. So again, nice little package, and of course this slips into the uh, little slot there in the digipack. All in all, and I like this shot of Ian too as well. Such a, such a distinguished older guy, right? So there's my review. 3.5 out of 5 star for Rock Flute. I think I like this a little bit better than Zealot Gene, which I like quite a bit. You know, some people hated it, some people were indifferent to it, some people thought it was awesome, whatever. I didn't think it was awesome, but I really, really liked it a lot. I think I like this more. Again, I wanted a little more rock out of Zealot Gene. I get it here. Uh, there's the complexity here, the lovely melodies here, great flute playing, lots of guitar. So I would highly recommend this. Again, if you're not on board with Jethro Tull anymore, hey, I get it. I still am. So uh, there you have it. This is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together. All the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And click on that notification bell to so get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before we leave. Also, we've got the links down below for our Ko-Fi page and our channel and our merch page. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. And there's probably people watching right now. It's like, oh, my God, he gave it the same rating as the new Metallica. Yeah basically. Um, like I said, I think the Metallica is pretty good. I think this is pretty good. They're both pretty good for different reasons. Uh, I think what this gets right is the perfect length, all right? What this doesn't get right is it's way too long, but there's some really good stuff on here. So uh, if you haven't watched my 72 Seasons review, go check it out here on the channel, and uh, we'll see you real soon. we got new Overkill coming up today for you as well, so uh, stay tuned for that. And you might get one more besides that. I'm not really sure. It might be a little light this weekend, this week, but uh, stay tuned. Till then, I'm Pete Bartlett. Bye-bye.